Welcome back to another episode. Today we're going to talk about Seed Studio's Groove Modules and how you can add them to one of our products. And the easiest way would be Seed's Groove Shield. This can be can plug directly into one of our Fez boards. Uh, for example, it can be the Fez Panda or the Fez Cobra or any other board that has a, the, our, the standard Arduino pinouts. And this goes through uh, the shield right here. I have, a, I have a demo over here that's using the groove, the groove modules. The modules are different sensors. Some of them are uh, measure temperature or sense acceleration. Others can be outputs like LEDs or display uh, or a controller of motor controller, for example. And they all plug into, as you can see here, they plug into uh, standardized sockets. It's a four pin uh, wire, this wire right here. This plugs between the main board and the individual modules. And in this case, the, the, uh, the main board, the holder board is the shield that's plugged on top of a Fez Cobra. I added this on the back just to show how you can actually have another thread running something else while using the modules easily, thanks to the system that we have here with threading and .NET and all the, all the beautiful uh, things that come with modern programming. In this demo, I have a... Uh, character display, and a, uh, a light, an LED. Um, I also have a touch. This is, works just like a button, but it's, uh, it's touch sensitive. So when I touch it, it changes the backlight on the character display. And then uh, let me change the color to something cooler. Yeah, there you go. And then we also have a uh, buzzer right here. And I have a temperature sensor. What I did is write a little piece of code that checks the temperature. Right now the temperature is 19 point something. When I heat up the, temp the temperature sensor, I'm going to use the soldering iron. That would be the easiest way. Uh, or if I can hold it, I can raise it a couple, a couple degrees, for example. Let me do it right now. 20. 21. So when the te when temperature reach uh, 30, the LED comes on to indicate like high temperature, and then when it over over 33, the buzzer comes on. Let's try that really quick here. So I'm gonna heat up the back of the circuit. Uh, 25, 26, 28, 30. The LED came on. Let's heat it up some more. 32, 33. There we go. Okay, nice. All this is done very easily. These modules are very simple. They have power ground, and power can be 3.3 or 5, depending on the switch right here. You can select between the two voltages. I find it better to go with 5 volts, since most modules seem to work better with 5 volts. For example, this display didn't work at 3.3. I can switch it now and show you. It's, it shuts off. Uh, at 5 volts, the display still works. So I go with the... Uh, with five volts most of the time. Uh, but then you have to keep in mind that uh, some drivers are written for 3.3 volt in mind. Uh, for example, when I get the code for the temperature sensor from seed, the formula to calculate to scale the, uh, the voltage input to temperature was based on 3.3 volts. So my readings were off and I had to change the code so it's based on five volts. Um, so now I'm reading the correct temperature. Uh, another example I have here is the uh, distance sensor. Normally, these when you're using distance sensor with a um, with an operating system or something that's uh, like our system over here, it's not it's not easily done because there's a whole operating system in the back that's running all kind of uh, tasks and threads, memory management, etc. So handling little tasks like this, where this require a an accurate pulse, and then the, there is an echo that comes back after a few microseconds, and you have to read the, the width of the pulse that's coming back. And this is not an easy task for, task for an operating system that's running multiple things. This would be easy if you're just running um, like Arduino code, for example, or embed, because the system is really not doing anything but your small loop that is measuring the, uh, that time. 
But in our libraries, we have a method, a blocking method that when you call, it does that task in a, in a blocking way. So it stops the entire system for that very short time and does the, measuring, the measurement for you. And in, in this example, I am controlling the speed of that bouncy circle that's going on the screen through the uh, distance sensor. So let me show you over here. So I have the sensor. I'm going to use my hand. So the closer I come, the slower the ball moves. The further I go out, the faster it bounces on the screen. Okay, and slower. Now there is a there is a bug where the ball gets stuck on the side of my code. I invite you to look at the code and find the bug. Let's see who can find it first. So if I do it again, it should, it should release itself. Here we go. So find the bug in the code. Let us know what it is. Uh, one thing that I would like to mention uh, before we finish this video is something I found really nice about the, uh, the how these are designed, these groove modules are designed. Let me show you the shield separately so you can easily see it. So on the shield, you see that we have D2, D3, D4, for example, and these are basically the D1, 2, 3 pins on the Fez Cobra pinout. So look here, this is, we have uh, the D1, 0, 1, 2, 3. These pins are connected directly to these sockets. So that's pretty straightforward. The four wires on this cable are power ground, and then there is the first signal and the second signal. But then if we have D1, 2, 3, how do we have a second signal on the cable? Well, what's nice about this, if you look closer up here, and we'll do a real close up here and show you that, if you look at D2, for example, right by the socket, you would see that it lists D2 and D3. And D3 would be like the, the second signal. This would be an optional signal. Most modules have one signal, so they're just using D2. The, the D3 is not connected. But then on the modules that have two signals, that utilizes both pins, you couldn't use the D3 anymore. So once you plug a module over here in the D2 that requires two signals, you automatically picked up that D3 off the second socket, meaning you cannot use the second socket. But then, since most modules use one signal, this is not a problem, and it works beautifully. You still have two, uh, two, so, two pin option if that is needed on some modules, but that does not waste the socket. You still have all D2, 3, 4, 5, 6, they're all uh, available to you. How can you determine if a module uses one or two signals? That's pretty easy. Every module has the uh, pinout listed on the front or on the back. For example, over here, this is the socket on, the, uh, on one side. But then I have all the signals are listed on the other side. And I have, for example, on this one, I have VCC ground on this side. And this over here, I, I see two um, signals listed. So I know this one has two signals, not one. This would, if I plug this into D2, for example, I would be also needing D3. So I couldn't plug anything in D3. Uh, sh show you a different example. Let me pick something that has one uh, socket, uh, one uh, that uses one signal, like the button or the LED. If I look at the button, I see ground, VCC, uh, NC, which stands for no connect, and then the signal. On the LED, look at the back. Uh, it's actually on the front. I have same thing, signal, NC for no connect, and then the power and the ground signals. Uh, overall, pretty easy, nice to use, and they are, can be easily used with all our uh, Fez freaking easy products. Uh, enjoy it to try it out. I invite you to try it out. I hope you enjoy it and you like this video and we'll see you next week. Thank you.